Hi, I'm Rebecca Santarella, and today I'm going to be telling you about some exciting work we've been doing on manifold alignment for biological data. So first, some motivation. So as technology advances, it's getting easier and easier to take measurements in single cells. And by this I mean we can t measure a lot of things like gene expression and RNA methylation. But a lot of these measurements end up destroying the cells when we take them. So if you take a lot of these measurements like DNA expression and like gene expression and RNA methylation, you end up with disparate data sets where you've measured a lot of these things but not in the same cells. And ideally, to understand the most about what's going on biologically, you'd like to be able to combine these data sets in some way. And so this is the problem of alignment. And what you want to do is find a way to bring these two data sets together. It, um, but it's a really challenging problem because we don't have one-to-one -one correspondence between the cells or the features. And so people have worked on this before, and generally they're working under the underlying assumption that our data shares an underlying manifold structure. And this means that there's actually is a meaningful way to align these two data sets. That even though we don't know one-to-one -one correspondences, there is some way that these data sets should go together. And so what a lot of the current methods rely on is some sort of joint um, alignment and dimension reduction algorithm that brings both data sets down into a common embedding space. And so two common um, versions right now are MMDMA and UnionCom, which both take this approach. Unfortunately, though, both of these methods have four hyperparameters to tune, which can be extremely difficult in this fully unsupervised setting. So our approach to this problem is instead to use optimal transport. So optimal transport generally looks at the problem of transforming one probability distribution into another through the least amount of work. And so you can think about this as like looking at a bunch of sand piles and thinking how can we move the grains of sand efficiently to fill in a hole. And we're talking about this with probability, so we're going to define probability measures on all of our data. And then we solve an optimization problem that's going to tell us exactly how these two uh, distributions should be related to one another. So in, the, in particular, in the discrete setting, you're going to get a probability matrix that tells you how all the data points are related, and the row sums will give you the first distribution, and the column sums will give you the second distribution. And so then once you have this matrix, you can actually use it to transport the points from one domain onto the other. And what we end up using is this special version of optimal transport called gromov wasserstein optimal transport. And in this, in our cost function, you're going to look at pairs of distances. And in particular, how do you distort pairs of distances in the transport, and how can we preserve that? And so the important thing here is that we're hoping that by preserving pairwise distances, we'll be preserving some sort of local structure in the data, so that when you project one data set onto the other, you still have some of that initial biological meaning in the two domains. So our method is single cell alignment using optimal transport, or SCOT for short. So we start with two data sets, and on these data sets we construct k-nearest neighbor graphs, and from these k-nearest neighbor graphs we construct pairwise distance matrices. And so then we can actually solve the optimization problem. So for this optimization problem, we need to input marginal distributions on the original data sets. So for us, we use uniform distributions, which means that we're weighting each point equally likely. And then we're looking for um, a probabilistic coupling matrix to tell us how all the points in the two domains are related. And so inside our optimization problem, we have a few terms. The first is a cost function that will tell us that we want to preserve pairwise distances. So in particular, it's looking at how the distance for, between points i and k in the first domain differ from the distances between points j and l in the second domain. And then we weight that by co correspondence probabilities to so tell us if we should transport point i in the first domain to j in the second domain, and likewise with k in the first domain to l in the second domain. And then we add this term of entropy for regularization to make the computations more efficient. So from this, we end up with a probabilistic coupling matrix. So in this matrix, entry ij tells us how cell i should be related to cell j. And there's a lot of things we could do with this coupling matrix, um, because now we have this probabilistic framework for relating these two data sets. Um, you can think of some sort of Bayesian approach. But instead, what we're going to actually just use it for is to take a weighted average of the data sets based on this coupling matrix, which will allow us to project one on top of the other. 
So first we tried this out on simulated data. So we have three simulated data sets, a bifurcation, a Swiss roll, and a circular frustum. And then, so for all these data sets, we can see how well our alignment is. And then the nice thing is because this is simulated, we have nice one-to-one -one correspondences to check. So we have a metric that can look at how good the alignment is. And the closer this metric is to zero, the better the alignment. So we compare our baseline against two methods, MMDMA and UnionCom. And we find that our method Scott outperformed both methods on all the simulated data. Then we apply it to real world data. So the first is SCGEM, which is gene expression and DNA methylation data. And then the second is SNARE-seq, which has chromatin accessibility and gene expression data. And then the nice thing about this data set is that for both data sets, these were co-assays, which means that both that a cell could be profiled and have both of these measurements taken simultaneously. So we actually do have one-to-one -one correspondences between the data sets, which means that again, we can actually measure how well we're doing and values closer to zero tell us we're doing better. And so we're performing on par with the other algorithms, but especially for SNARE-seq, MMDMA does a bit better. However, we're not too worried about that because the real selling point of our algorithm is that it's significantly faster than other alignment algorithms. And so you can see this here in our plot of our running times. Um, this is a log plot. So notice that the differences are a bit more extreme than they might at first look. And so we're looking at for Scott, MMDMA, UnionCom, and the GPU version of UnionCom. And so on average, Scott is about 25 times faster than these other two methods. And then additionally, Scott only has two hyperparameters, whereas MMDMA and UnionCom both have four. So this means we have a much easier time looking through hyperparameter space. So in conclusion, we're able to present some very good alignment results on data. Uh, we have a much faster algorithm, and it only has two hyperparameters. And so if you're interested in finding out more of the details, such as our implementation, I've included a QR code, or we have this tiny URL slash Scott 20 that will take you to our preprint. Thank you for your time and thank you to all of my collaborators.